Hello, and welcome to the Drug Discovery World podcast, a podcast covering topics around drug discovery and development, pharma, and biotech. My name is Giles, and I'm here to take you through this episode. Today's episode is taken from our recent Spring 2019 issue, titled 3D Organoid Cell Culture, Optimizing Disease Models for Research and Drug Discovery. This article was written by Dr. Amanda Linkhouse, Hilary Sherman, Iris Lee, and Dr. Richard M. Eglin. So now on to the main article, 3D Organoid Cell Culture, Optimizing Disease Models for Research and Drug Discovery. The use of human-induced pluripotent stem cells, HIPSCs, continues to grow in three-dimensional, 3D, spheroid, and organoid culture. Although advances in 3D cell culture systems are improving drug target validation and lead optimization, it is the advancement of organoid cell culture that is making a significant impact in disease modeling and drug discovery. In this episode, we examine the use of organoid cell culture systems as applied to cancer research and the development of novel anti-oncologic drugs. Collectively, this transition from 3D spheroid culture to organoid culture allows researchers to generate multiple organ-specific cell types, resulting in cell architectures that more closely resemble the human tissue microenvironment. Furthermore, researchers are generating organoid cultures that are increasingly complex and more phenotypically relevant, and as a result, optimal models are being established to better understand patient-specific tumour proliferation and invasion patterns. As 3D cell culture has become more widely accepted, Researchers have become more proficient with 3D techniques, and the models being created have become more complex. Researchers now create spheroids made of multiple cell types, combine tools to create advanced co-culture models, and are recapitulating organs from stem cells, including human IPS, HIPSCs, cells to the form of organoids. These recent advances in 3D cell culture and greater adoption of HIPSCs for basic research and drug discovery are coalescing to generate systems that provide numerous advantages over more traditional, established culturing systems. While 3D systems provide more in vivo-like tissue environments in which to study cell function, patient-derived HIPSCs provide a better model of human disease pathophysiology than other model systems. Consequently, researchers can now better study the complex in vivo functionality of tissue and organ systems, and can monitor patient-specific response to treatment prior to clinical evaluation. Organoids, and more complex organ systems, are now being leveraged for lead optimization, including estimations of compound preclinical toxicity and potential metabolic liability. Using HIPSCs, several organoids have now been generated, including brain, eye, intestine, liver, lung, heart, and kidney. These models offer researchers a tool to better study tissue formation, renewal, and function, while maintaining many of the disease characteristics of the individual from which the cells were sourced. 3D Cell Culture and Cancer Research Cancer researchers were among the first to adopt 3D cell culture systems, principally as development of 3D cell culture systems facilitate study of host tumor interactions. In addition, Progress has been made in the use of 3D cell systems in high-throughput screening for cancer drug discovery and development. A diverse array of model systems is available to investigate the disease mechanisms that promote tumorigenesis. Such systems range from simplistic 2D cultures that rarely recapitulate the true complexity of human cancer, to very expensive and complex mouse models that seldom reflect the pathophysiology of human tumor progression. In a climate where the clinical trial success rate for oncology drugs is only 3.4%, cancer researchers are adopting 3D culture techniques to study human cancer biology and develop novel, efficacious treatments for cancer patients. While cancer cell organoids are typically derived from primary cells rather than HIPSCs, solid tumor models grown in 3D systems encourage cell-cell and cell-matrix interactions that closely imitate the natural environment. Compared to 2D cell culture systems, these models better mimic solid tumor gene and protein expression, metabolic activity, cell stress response, structure, signal transduction, and cellular transport proteins. 
exhibit patient variability and resistance to drug uptake and metabolism, and drug sensitivity, and reproduce most parameters of the tumour microenvironment, including oxygen and nutrient gradients, as well as the development of dormant tumour regions. Two clear examples of these advantages can be found in research related to breast cancer. Pickel et al. demonstrated that breast tumours cultured in 3D express higher sensitivity to trastuzumab than those cultured in 2D, as the cells of the 3D cultures display increased activation and dependence on HER2 and HER3 signaling. Trastuzumab blocked HER2 and HER3 activation and proliferation of 3D cultures, but not 2D cultured cells. Wenzel et al. used imaging technologies to distinguish the inner core of T47D breast cancer cells cultured in 3D from those in the outer core of the culture. Inner core cells had less access to oxygen and nutrients and showed reduced metabolic activity compared with outer core cells. By screening small molecule libraries against these 3D cell cultures, these authors identified nine novel compounds that selectively killed the inner core cancer cells without affecting the more active proliferating outer core cancer cells. The field is now moving toward more predictive 3D cancer models that utilize patient-derived tumors, as well as high-throughput drug screening using these 3D models. Numerous methods have been reported that consistently produce 3D tumor organoids and that are compatible with HTS automation instrumentation, increasing the potential for large-scale drug screening using patient-derived tumor models. Nonetheless, the limitations of 2D cell culture are most clear in neurological research. Indeed, 2D cultures lack the complexity of the brain in terms of function and development. While neural stem cells can differentiate successfully in both 2D and 3D cell culture formats, differentiated neural stem cell spheroids have been shown to present similar or stronger neuronal and glial signals than those grown in 2D cultures. Progress has also been made in generating HIPSC-derived neuronal organoids that display a level of self-organization that is not recapitulated in 2D cell cultures, suggesting a promising advance in understanding neurodegenerative diseases such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. Three-dimensional cultures of HIPSC-derived neuronal cells have been generated in large-scale arrays and imaging technologies used to measure neurite outgrowth. HIPSC-derived neurons from patients with familial Alzheimer's disease mutations can be grown in 3D cultures for at least eight weeks. It was shown that diseased neurons expressed several key proteins involved in Alzheimer's disease neurodegeneration, including A-beta and phosphorylated tau protein. These data may provide a screening format to identify compounds acting to reduce the production of these disease-causing biomarkers. Another recent study monitored the expression of A-beta in 3D cell cultures of HIPSC-derived neurons from five different patients with familial Alzheimer's disease. They measured the action of known inhibitors of beta and gamma secretase, enzymes responsible for generating neuronal A-beta, and cultured the neurons for up to nine weeks to generate more mature neurons for drug testing. The addition of beta and gamma secretase inhibitors lowered A-beta levels in the neurons cultured in 3D, but their efficacy was markedly less than that in 2D cultures of the same cells, likely due in part to reduced bioavailability. It was also shown that neurons from a patient in which beta secretase inhibitors were ineffective lacked key proteins required for enzyme inhibition. These data and other reports suggest that drug efficacy is affected by the variability in the cell genome and proteome of different patients. They also reiterate the advantage of 3D cell culture versus 2D cell culture as a predictor of human drug efficacy in vivo. This is particularly relevant given that beta secretase inhibitors have now all failed to show efficacy in late-stage clinical trials. This also illustrates the importance of screening HIPSC-derived neurons from multiple patients to estimate variations in clinical efficacy. Glioblastoma multiform, GBM, is the most lethal, as well as the most common, type of primary brain tumour in adults. The result and drug development work focused on GBM has been limited by preclinical models that relay on cell autonomous in vitro models, or in vivo models that poorly simulate human disease. 
Tumors are complex systems that are greatly influenced by their host. While several 3D models of cancers have been developed, all are fundamentally limited and only address some aspects of GBM. Patient-derived glioma stem cells, GSCs, are the accepted standard for studying GBM biology. This subpopulation of cells is the most phenotypically relevant to the parental tumor and is imperative for tumor initiation, maintenance, and invasion. In addition, GSCs demonstrate an increased resistance to cytotoxic drugs and ionizing radiation. GSCs are not cell autonomous, however, but are instead greatly influenced by tumor host cell interactions. Efforts to generate 2D co-cultures of GSCs with neurons, glia, and other brain-specific cell types often result in disorganized cellular structures that are not representative of the human brain. Furthermore, while tumor organoids allow GSCs to grow within a 3D extracellular matrix, they do not address the criticality of the tumor-host-tissue microenvironment interactions. A powerful tool has recently been developed for modeling human GBM using human embryonic stem cell, HESC, or iPSC-derived cerebral organoids and patient-derived GSCs. Linkhouse et al. established glyco, cerebral organoid glioma, models to retroengineer patient-specific GBMs, resulting in tumors that closely mimic the patient's original brain tumor. Using Corning Matrigel as a 3D extracellular matrix, HESCs were differentiated into fully formed cerebral organoids. GFP labeled GSCs were then co cultured with individual cerebral organoids for 24 hours. The tumor take rate was 100% for all GSC lines, and considerable tumor growth was detected one week after co culture of the tumor infiltrated organoids. Additionally, the tumor bearing organoids recapitulated the tumor morphology found in human patient GBMs. The interrogation of the growth patterns of six patient-derived GSC lines in the model revealed dramatically differentiated patterns and degrees of tumor cell invasion and proliferation between the different lines. This differentiation reflects the heterogeneity of the invasive phenotypes clinically observed in patients. The glyco model addresses several limitations presented by prior models, allowing researchers to study patient-specific GBMs within a microenvironment like that of a human brain. Because it is grown ex vivo, the model can be used for experimental drug treatment. In addition, the model is scalable for high-throughput drug screening, opening the possibility for successfully screening tumor cells for clinically active drugs and other interventions. Summary and Outlook The culturing of human-derived tissues in 3D organoid systems presents a major advance in drug discovery, and specifically, the ability to successfully screen tumor cells in vitro for clinically active drugs. Compared to 2D cell culture, 3D cultures provide more architecturally relevant barriers for compounds to pass through, a critical factor in determining efficacy. Additionally, 3D cell culture systems better model cell-cell interaction, a benefit most apparent in complex tissues such as the brain. Finally, the temporal aspect of 3D cell culture, which in many cases is long-lived, is important when modeling diseases such as neurodegenerative diseases, which are often slow to develop. As researchers have become more proficient with 3D techniques, the models being created have become more complex. Researchers can better study the in vivo functionality of tissue and organ systems, and monitor patient-specific response to treatment. The generation of organ-specific organoids using HPSCs are proving to be particularly powerful tools for cancer research, as they allow for the study of organ development and tissue morphogenesis, as well as better modeling of diseases. These advances, along with those in high-throughput screening, are leading to more clinically relevant models. In the future, researchers will likely continue to move more towards patient-specific treatments and personalized medicine. Technologies and methods such as those used to generate patient-specific organoids, renewable human tissue, and 3D bioprinted cancer models are advancing and providing a window into the future. The authors of this article would like to thank Dr. Wesley Hung of the Corning Research Center, Taiwan, for his neural stem cell spheroid data. This article was written by Dr. Amanda Linkhouse, Hilary Sherman, Iris Lee, and Dr. Richard M. Eglin.
Dr. Amanda Linkhaus previously served as the director of the Star Foundation Cerebral Organoid Translational Core at Weill Cornell Medicine. Dr. Linkhaus is currently the Scientific Center Manager for the NCI's Center for Systems Biology of Small Cell Lung Cancer at Vanderbilt University. Hilary Sherman is a senior scientist in the Corning Life Sciences Applications Lab, located in Kennebunk, ME. Hilary has been with Corning Incorporated since 2005, and has worked with a wide variety of cell types, including mammalian, insect, primary, and stem cells, in a vast array of applications. Iris Lee is Director, Global Scientific Applications and Support of Corning Life Sciences. She has been with Corning Life Sciences since 2008, and focuses on management of field application support, technical call centers, and technology centers. Dr. Richard M. Eklund is currently Vice President and General Manager of Corning Life Sciences, an operating division of Corning Incorporated based outside of Boston, Massachusetts. Dr. Eklund has more than 40 years' experience in the life sciences industry. Prior to joining Corning in 2011, he was President of Biodiscovery at Perkin Elmer, and held other executive management positions in the pharmaceutical, diagnostic, and biotech industries. If you've enjoyed this episode, then you can subscribe to Drug Discovery World free of charge by visiting our website at ddw-online.com, where you can also view all of our articles, including references and images, and download the original PDFs. The links are in the show notes. If you've enjoyed the podcast, then do leave us a review and subscribe, and you can also follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Thank you for listening, and we'll hope to see you in our next episode.